Hello, welcome to a spiritual episode 14. Uh, today, my very uh, I have a very special guest, and today episode it's about if you are on a crossroads of your life where you're needing to find direction and you already try different things, you already try uh, I don't know maybe books or maybe uh, therapy or other ways of trying to find your purpose or direction in life and maybe you're feeling unsure where to go next or maybe you're needing to find um, a, a make a big decision you know in your life which is uh, sometimes we need guidance for that so my guest today is um, the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and she is an international recognized angelic Reiki master, teacher, and practitioner. She is a qualified hypnotherapist and trained and certified in future and past progression. My, um, her name is Ray, I've, and her mission in life is to help those at a crossroads in their lives get clear on their destiny so let me see if she is already here so i can add her uh no i don't see her uh right if you're watching can you can you um oh there you are Hello, hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I know my surname is so awkward, but it's Kalnan. Awesome, awesome. How are you today? I'm not too bad. Enjoying the fact I've got sunshine coming in here in the UK. So. Oh, beautiful. Like last time we spoke, it was a little bit uh, cloudy and that is nice. It looks beautiful. I can see like the, the sunshine in your, in your face. It, it, it's a nice yeah nice view it, it is how long it will last for is is another matter <laughs> yeah that, that you know that's the beauty of weather you know it's so unpredictable right oh tell me about it yeah so um right um so what i like to do here in in my in this series is to um uh, educate people about different modalities about you know how to heal and how to find purpose if they don't have one I you know and so what what is that that you or can you tell us a little bit more about what you do um yes yeah, certainly um I basically help um those that are crossroads in their life heal their past create their future transform their present so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. And I do that by a variety of methods, um, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angelic reiki, angel cards, hypnosis, what, whatever the person needs, or even a combination of things to help them sort of like get clear on, on their path. Um, I mean, I work very much in the present. Um, but So although I work with past life regression, I work with that so that it will clear and heal anything that's affecting someone now in the present. Um, so they no longer have to worry about it. So if they're not worrying about the past, then they're absolutely in the present. Um, and then if I take them into the future, if they know what their life is going to be like, say in five years time, then they don't have the worries about what's going to happen. So when they're in the present, they're fully, fully grounded, fully here. And by being fully present and fully here, you're actually in control of your life because you're not letting outside influences affect you anymore. And you can go along your journey and your path. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And how is that you get into, you know, because I think each of us and this pad have a different background story and how did you get to where you are right now? So what, what happened in your life that you, but I, I, I read about you that you always been like surrounded by a spiritual and you no know, all this sort of thing. So, but what was really like, what, what was something really that triggered your decision to come into helping people this way? 
Um, I don't think I, there wasn't a particular trigger, trigger as such. Um, I mean, I used to get a little bit worried when I first started because everyone would say, I had this traumatic experience. I had this traumatic experience. I'm thinking, I haven't had one. Does that mean I'm not spiritual because I've not had one? Um, but um, I've actually had past lives where I've had lots of past life issues. So that was all, all sort of like where everything accumulated for me to actually be in this lifetime. So I chose to come to this lifetime so that I could be able to help people on their path. I mean, obviously as a child, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. Um, you know, I was being taken to spiritist churches as a child. Um, you know, my mum uh, did palmistry, um, uh, psychometry, my aunt read, you know, cards. So it's kind of like all, all around me all the, all the time. But it was just, I always wanted to help people. And I was always kind of like the mediator between people. So even at school, I was a friend of the people that were the classes, the geeks, the ones that no one really liked. But I also friends with the, um, you know, with the top notch people, the cool kids. And that's, so I was able to marry both together uh, because I never liked seeing the other, you know, the, the ones that they thought, thought, thought weren't as good as them um, being ignored. Um, so I've kind of like always wanted to help people and I've helped people. And as a child, I didn't really, you don't really realise what you're, what you're doing. You have all this stuff around you. Um, and then when I got to teenage years, early 20s, that all completely went out of the window, as, as it always does, you know, because you start going out with friends, boys, work, you know, everything <laughs> like that. So, so although this stuff was still there and I dabbled in runes and tarot cards, I never really did too, too much with it because I was too busy enjoying myself, as, as you do. And then a few years later, um, around about 2000, I ended up going... Well, I'd, I'd had my, because I still had tarot readings, and I'd had a reading, and someone said, oh, you're going to be going to Sri Lanka, um, and it's going to be life-changing for you. And, and I didn't think too much of it. And then a year later, I thought, actually, do you know something? I really do fancy, fancy going somewhere else. I mean, I was in a uh, steady relationship at the, t at the time with my, with my ex. And I thought, do you know something? I want to go somewhere, but I want to go somewhere by myself you know I don't want so I looked around and this this is how synchronicities start and I found I thought where can I go you know so I'll, I know I'll open the computer and just see what um, Lonely Planet have got to offer so think about they're doing an article on Peru okay sounded <laughs> interesting um, so, so I thought okay so I both thought I'll order a few brochures about Peru then a few days later, I turned on the telly and there was a Stephen Fry program or documentary on where he was talking about Peruvian bears. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, the, 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 brochures, the brochures came through. So I looked through and there were various ones and a company called, to, an Australian company called Tukum were doing one. I thought, oh, you know, that, that looks really good. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, you're with a group, but you're by, your, you know, you can be by yourself, et cetera. So you've got the company, but you're still independent. I thought, oh, well, you know, when I get the money, I'll get it together. And then at the time I was remortgaging and they made a mistake on my mortgage and they had to give me some money back. And the money was the exact <laughs> amount of this particular trip. <laughs> so it's like, OK, maybe I'm meant to do this. And the next thing I know, um, uh, someone I was working with, her grandfather died and she was clearing out his attic and she came across an old Peruvian map and an old Lonely Planet guy. And it was like, I've got to, I've got to, I've, I've got to do this. Um, so, so, so I did. And it was one of the most amazing experiences of, of my life. And the 13 people I met, it was like we'd all known each other before. We just literally all instantly clicked. It was, it was absolutely amazing, the energy. And when I came back to England, you know, uh, it sort of like came back in the November and I was in the office because I was doing um, admin work at the time and I looked out the window and thought, Do you know something, I'd rather be out in that horrible stormy weather than sitting here in an office. Um, and, that, and that's how it kind of like evolved, evolved from there. And about that time, angels had sort of like started pop, 
popping in, you know, sort of like, I wasn't really aware of channeling or anything like that then, but it's like, oh, angels are sort of like coming in. So I looked around and at that time in 2000, there wasn't a lot of stuff on angels there is now. Um, so I mean, to, for me to get angel stuff, I had to sign up to a Christmas catalogue once a year to be able to get anything to do with angels. Oh. I mean, now you can just go down the street and you've got, and, and you've got loads of it. And then I found Angelic Crakey, um, which helped me with the, with the healing. And about that time, um, I found that with the angelic Reiki, I was doing a lot of multidimensional healing. And multidimensional healing is healing across um, healing past, future, different dimensions. And that's what I was doing. And it brought back a memory that I'd had um, years ago about past life regression, because a friend of mine had actually done a past life regression on me. I was one of their case studies. And I'd had several readings since um, since then. I thought, you know something, this is something I could be doing. Um, and then I happened to spot future life progression as well. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll do the future life and the past life together. And then it's whilst working with all those that it just, everything just fell into place. And it's like, I can actually help women now transform transform their lives or help people transform their lives because I've done it for myself because I've cleared all my past stuff so I'm not worried about everything that happened in the past I know where I'm going in the future because I've, I've I've seen it so I have no worries about it so I can concentrate on my here and now and that's just how things have all all, ta all taken off and it's like well if I can do that for myself then I can do it for other people and they don't have to go through all the training and everything that, that I've done. And I can help them on their journey and get them on that path. So that I can then say, go ahead, spread your wings and off you go and do whatever you need to do for your spiritual journey. Beautiful. And I, I love, you know, how everything, and I think that's kind of similar to what happened on with, with my story, you know, is that I mm. was also, you know, in that, point of life where you know I was I, I was feeling the need to to explore or grow or do something different and that's how I ended up in um uh, in Peru um so for you when you went to Peru I think there's just something magical about Peru you know whatever the purpose is of your trip and when you're there with people it's just like I, I don't know if it's like something magical or is something that helps you connect to back to yourself just by being there I don't know what is it but I'm very uh uh amazed you know that that happened to you as well mm. and, and then regarding to, so when you do the healings and the, okay, so David has a question. Let me see. Okay. It says, okay. David Burns uh, is asking, what, and what point in your life did you realize your purpose? If you have at this point in your life, I ask because we all have a purpose and it seems you are on the path to enlightening those around and who listen to you. And would you consider it to be a spiritual meta philosophy or philosophy or maybe all in general? Oh, wow. Um, I've kind of like just always had a knowing. At everything in my life it's kind of like something I mm, okay. kind of like just know and it, it just it just it just it just came to me um that I knew my purpose in this lifetime was to help as many people find their purpose get on get on their path um as as, as they can um so so it, it's it's really difficult because each person it's individual to 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 them um you know some some, every, everyone is born knowing what they're here to do. Unfortunately, as soon as we um, come out of the birth canal and we come into this great big world, we kind of like all the outside influences, we, we, we tend to forget it, which is why when children are born, it's kind of like you don't really, when they say, oh, you know, I've got Joe is my imagined, you know, imagined friend, that, pop, that could possibly be a real a real friend it's just the being or you know I've done this I've done that oh don't make up stories and we and we dampen and we dampen it down um so it's so everyone is 
is comes into this world knowing what they're supposed to do, but we tend to forget it. And you normally find the right point in your life is when you suddenly remember. You remember or you go and see somebody who helps you via healing or, or any other modality. And suddenly you go, actually, this is what I'm, what I'm here for. Um, but, but you can fine tune it, you know, with, with cards and, 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 diff and, different and different therapies. So for me, it was just something I've always known. And it's been confirmed by um, just by my knowing and, and whatever I get, I get downloaded. But for other people, it really is down to, to where they are on their path, whether they want to know what they're here for um, and whether they're open to it. Because you might think, oh, I want to know, but you're not open to it. Mm. Um, and I think that's the biggest block for a lot of people. It's like, yeah, I want to know what my purpose is, but I'm not sure if I actually want to go ahead and do it. And it's kind of like giving yourself permission. Actually, I know I was here to do something. I want to know what my purpose is and I'm open to hearing it. Mm. That, that's beautiful. And, and I, I agree with you. You know, we all, we all know um what we are here to do you know we all hear we all know where we come for but we forget and all the noise and then condition and all that things tends to take it away or you know like you say like shoving it down somewhere right in the back yeah. of our of our mind so i think it's one of the things that you say is like you can get a reading or something and then you remember so it, it, i think for do you think that for most people is like they go along the, with their lives, right? They think they know or they want to know. They think they they want to know what their purpose is, but they really don't want it. So that's maybe one of the reasons why they don't know their purpose. And the other thing is, do you think like is like with a reading or with a channel or something that the person can really no or or do you think it's something more spontaneous or what what do you think that um I, again it 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 really depends i mean a lot of it is is in your subconscious um which which is why when um you know i do past life regression or future life progression and i take people into a theta state your subconscious allows itself to come out so your analytical your conscious side actually quietens down because you all know within you and your subconscious will will tell you um you know what what you need to do so sometimes it's spontaneous um other times it's kind of like you have to look for the signs that will lead you to it um and other times it's kind of like okay this is what you need to do um but it's quite good because I never actually tell people what they're supposed to do because it's, I help the person go into them, go into their selves to actually work out what they're supposed to do because it's not my role to say, but you're supposed to be doing this, you're supposed to be doing that. It's to help them go with inside themselves and find out what they need to be doing. Yeah. And, and, there is a lot, I think right now there's a lot of people because I've been, or I don't know if you synchronicities or what's happening, but I've encountered like a lot of people lately that are, that have that feeling of missing something or that they're like, they're like in the breach or the verge of remembering that they came here for something. So they're not even, even asking, you know, that I have a purpose. They're like about to get to that point where, oh, you know what? I think I came here for something. So, and the beginning of remembering, I guess, right? So do, do you think, um, and, and I love what you said that you don't tell people what to do because yeah, if, for the people out there, someone tells you what to do, yeah, don't go the other way because, yeah. because when it's, it, when it'll happen to them, you know, it'll be something like you say, you say maybe a word, just a word, and that will trigger, oh, you know, that's what I was supposed to, or that's what I came here to do. Yes. Oh, that sounds familiar. Is, is that yes. like, yes, that's okay. So with the, with the angelic um, Reiki or what, what is it, what is it different than just uh, normal Reiki or the Reiki that most, yeah 
yeah, you, you, you sigh, Reiki. Um, the, the main difference is um, with, the, with the attunements, um, because with the Asai Reiki, the attunements are done, um, they come from master, teacher, pupil, and they follow a lineage all the way down. So you normally try and stay with the same person to do all your attunements. With Angelic Reiki, because the attunements are done by the angels, um, when you do Angelic Reiki 1 and 2, so you could uh, learn Angelic Reiki 1 and 2 with me, and then if you want to do 3 and 4 practitioners, or master teach with someone else, you can do that because all the attunements are done by the angelic realms. And then when it comes to the healing, with the Asai Reiki, you, you, ha you have to know the Reiki symbols and you place them into the person. Whereas with angelic Reiki, you don't actually do any of that at all. You actually have no say in the healing whatsoever. You just literally um, connect the most perfect healing angel um, and the person and you hold that space and you bring the angel in and the angel will go to where it thinks the healing is done. And the reason for that is as human beings, we kind of like want to know and we think we ought to go and treat something. So if someone comes to me with a sore arm, uh, as a human, I'm thinking, oh, I need to heal that, that arm to make it better. But the angels are coming and go, do you know something? We don't care about that, that shoulder, that arm. We think there's some emotional issue, some past life, wh whatever issue, and we're going to work on that. Mm. Um, and nine times out of ten, that will affect the physical ailment um, anyway, but, but in, the, in a different way. So that's really the two main differences between your side and angelic reiki, um, in that there's no human interference with angelic reiki. It's mm. all done by the angels. Oh, that's so interesting. So this is something really, I don't want to say weird because, well, I've been saying that word a lot today, but <laughs> I, say, I don't say that word. I've been saying it a lot today. But, um, <laughs> you know, so there were a couple of times where, like, I just started feeling like this energy going into me and my hands started making all these kind of different movements. And then I was with uh, two, mm. di two different people at two different times. And... I just feel like they were sharing, you know, something like they were experiencing some trouble in their life or they were experiencing, um, I don't know, like they were not feeling good, you know, they were kind of depressed or something. And then I just feel like the instinct to, to ask them, can I work on you? you? Do you give me permission to work on you? I didn't know that, like, where, not even where it was coming from. And then I started, you know, working with them and I started like moving my hands in different ways. And I really, to this day, I don't know, but uh, two of the people that I did that, they claim after that they started seeing lights, like blue lights or like orbs mm. in the rooms. So can you tell me what that was? Because until this day, I still don't know <laughs> what, what was that or if, if it has something to do with, with, with kind of what you do. Uh, everybody has the ability to heal um, be, because everything is energy you know I'm energy your energy um, my cushions behind me that you know their energy and we all come from the same energy source but we just all vibrate on different dimensions and any healing um, even with your Sai Reiki angelic Reiki um, any other types of healing it's all energy based and you know, the angels is, is an added tool for me that I can connect to. But anybody, if you, if you bring your energy up and you do it from unconditional love and you're kind of, I really want to help this person and that then, you know, you know, I'm open to it. Then anybody can, then anybody, you know, anybody can heal anybody. Um, it's just that very few people actually, you know, Get, think of that you know you obviously thought about it when when it came in you thought oh actually I can do something with this but it's quite often people will get stuff like that and they'll ignore it you know oh, I'm a bit warm today you know you know or, or, yeah. you know, or something or something like that so it's it's recognizing when when it comes in but you know but if you think about when a child is ill um, or say like a child has fallen over and they run to their parents you know and even if it's just a graze, you know, your, your mum or whatever will just put their hand over it and go, oh, that's okay, it's, 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 it's better now. You know, technically they're healing it because, because the energy of the, the love the person mm. has for that child is actually sending healing, you know, and the kids will go, oh, yeah, I feel better now and run off. So, 
So, so yeah, so it's, it's brilliant that you recognize the energy coming in and you actually worked with it. Yeah, so uh, another question. So with, with the, thank you for that, because I was like, I was like, I don't know what it was. And I was like, I don't know if I get scared. And I feel like, you know what, that's, I, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> okay, so that's with the, so when you're working with, with the, and I guess where my question was going is like, so when you're working with the and angelic um, or angel Reiki, is that the same? Like, do you feel like an energy coming through you, or and also can you do it remotely, or do you only do it like with people that goes and see you to your place? Um, yes, I, I do feel it energetically, and each healing angel that comes in is always is always different. Even if I'm doing, you know, seeing a person on a regular basis it's always a different um, healing energy that comes through and I can feel the different energies um, with, with, within, the, within the angels. And, you know, if they can, and sometimes it's a gentle energy, sometimes it's a stronger energy. And I remember once I was um, doing an exhibiting and I had this lady come and sit in front of me and she sort of said, yeah, I had a bad experience with your Psy Reiki, so I'm not sure if the angelic Reiki is going to work, you know. I'm, and I've, I've, I was connected and I brought the angel in and it's like, I could feel the angelic angel coming through me, but it wasn't going into her. She was really putting a block up for it. And I'm thinking, what's this going to happen? The next thing I know, I literally have felt this surge of energy and I've literally nearly gone into her as this energy just pushed itself. It's like it's gone into her and I've literally gone like that and nearly hit her. <laughs> um, to, doing it. So, so, so yeah, so, so it brings the um, energy in. But no, the person doesn't need to be, I don't need to see a person face to face. You know, I can do distance healing um, either via Skype or message, you know, seeing the person, or I can just do it by knowing, the per knowing by the person's name because it's all energy um, that comes in and energy knows no time. Energy can work at many different time levels, many different dimensions. You know, I had a, a friend of mine whose um, father was dying and they phoned me on their way to the hospital and said, you know, would you mind doing some angelic Reiki on, on my dad? And it's like, yeah, okay. So, 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 I sent, so I sent the healing, you know, for it to happen at the right time and, you know, the, at, at the right time. And my friend said when he was with his dad, he actually noticed when the energy came in. Wow. Uh, and that because because his dad, you know, his dad was 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 was, was, slightly, was slightly was slightly different. So yeah, you don't need to have the person in front of you. It can be it can be done distance healing, and sometimes it actually works better distance healing because there's no expectations. Mm -hmm. um, about it and it will happen at the most perfect time which is normally when someone's asleep and do, and with the readings also they can be like remote or yeah yeah angel, angel card readings um you you, do, you don't need to do you don't need to do those those face to face um uh, i mean when i do angel card readings i do it for i don't do it for the future i do it for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time I and mean, it's nice if the person's in front of you, you know, and they can play with the cards. But no, you you you, you don't need to um, because when I did, you know, when I did the card card on my show, and that uh, I just tune into the the energy of the person and allow that energy to go into the cards um, because I'm asking for that person, and the cards, um, as you know, will come out perfectly for whatever that person needs needs to do. So no. So no, most most of the stuff um, I do can be done um, remotely. The only thing that I can't do remotely is when I teach angelic Reiki, that has to be one to one. But everything else, yeah, it can all be done remotely if need be. Oh, wonderful! So I don't know, and I didn't uh, ask you about this <laughs> uh, when we talked before. But uh, do you think you can do like a, a like one? Angel card reading for one like because David's been watching like the entire interview and I don't know if he would like to to have a, like a card drawn for him. Do you think you can do that? Would you like that, David? I don't know if he's still. 
there I can uh, well okay well funny enough I I have got my cards with me surprise surprise oh, wonderful <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, than that yeah I, I keep seeing people coming in and um, watching and then disappearing so hello to everyone who <laughs> uh, who I've recognized um with, with the name with the name coming across um and yeah what, what I'll do is um, I'll actually do a card for everyone that's actually um, been watching this or will be watching it um, live rather than picking on one particular person who okay. might, might not be happy with whatever card comes up. Actually, no, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do a card for David and then I'll do a card for everyone that's watching. Okay, wonderful. How's that sound? Yeah. <laughs> yep, okay. So, so it's usually I claim some best of cards. Okay, so what does David Burns need to know for his high school at this moment in time? What does David Burns need to know for his high school at this moment in time? Okay, so David, reaching your destination, your light is shining brightly. So I don't know how clear the card is there. there. Yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's quite clear there. Yeah. Um, so, so, so basically, David, um, wherever you're going or whatever you're doing, you're you're actually going to be getting there sooner rather than later. Um, you know, at at the moment, everything around you is is working out positively. Um, you know, and if you you probably won't see, but there's a castle in a bubble, and there's some other bubbles, and you know, you've got a protection around you at the moment. So, so don't worry about what's going, going on around you. You know, you're going to get there. Um, there's, there's nothing stopping you from, from doing it. And you've even got a butterfly um, beside and you're going along the path. So you're going forward. So, yeah, you're going to be reaching your destination um, and keep your light shining brightly. So I hope that made sense, David. <laughs> Uh, that so um, now I'll do a card for for everyone else. So I'll give those a quick lens and a bless again. So, what does Diana and everyone who's watching this? Well, that one jumped out. So, um, rejuvenating rain, clear the past, heal the present, <laughs> <laughs> which is what I've been talking about. That was so wonderful. <laughs> And that you, you know, I just, I just love the way the the cards um, just jump, you know, just jump out when when they when they need it. So it's basically saying to every, everyone, you know, on this, you know, if there's any issues that are affecting you from your past, it's now time to clear them. Whether you do that through um, energy healing, seeing someone to help you. Uh, through meditation, through asking your angels, whatever, it is now time to to clear to clear your past because when you clear your past, you're no longer affected by what's happening in the present, and that that doesn't necessarily mean to think clear um, clear in the past in past lives. It can also mean clearing things in this lifetime that are still that are still affecting you, um, and you just need to look back and. And, and um, you know, go into those things without letting them affect you and actually look at healing them, whether that's forgiving, um, as I said, or, or going to see a healer to have healing done on yourself. Um, but yeah, because once you've cleared your past, you're, you're, you're appealed your present, which means you can then move forward and you can actually um, be in charge of your destiny wonderful which is one of the things that you help with so that, that's wonderful <laughs> so yeah uh, the fact that car jumped out right? it's like okay <laughs> so uh, where can people find you like if they more they're interested in working with you or find out more about what is that you do where, where can they find you okay well you can find me on um facebook on my page radiant angel energy 
Um, or they can find me via my website, www.radiantangelenergy.co.uk. Um, or they can, you know, message me on, on Messenger. And what I do is I offer a free 20 to 30 minute um, face to face, either via Skype, Messenger, WhatsApp, where we can actually have a chat um, and work out whether we can work with each other and whether I can help you on your journey. Oh, wonderful. Well, that, I think that's very exciting. I'm going to put that information on the on the top of the video or oh, yeah. the information of the video for anyone that would like to reach and, and work with you, they can reach out to you. So uh, any any final thoughts or anything that you would like to add? Um, I think it's just that for people to stop worrying about what is going on in the world at the moment. There's a lot of negativity and everything going on, but we shouldn't be letting it affect us in our present lives, in, in, what, we're, in what we're doing, um, because it's all outside influences. If we all come from unconditional love and concentrate on our present, then all that negative stuff is going to disappear because it's not going to be able to feed on our fears or our energies. So it's kind of like, try not to be fearful um, about, about anything. You know, I've been into the, you know, I've been into the future, other people have been into the future and earth still exists. You know, in our next lifetimes, there is still earth. We, we've evolved, we've evolved and we might be slightly different, but earth still exists. So, you know, do everything you can to try and keep this planet as, as healthy as possible but don't worry don't let all the negativity affect you just stay positive it's much nicer thank you thank you so much i love that and i think we all need to hear that you know i'm gonna make a, a little <laughs> recording of that part just played over and over so thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much uh, for uh, accepting the invitation and being here and thank you so thank you so much so did you say oh brilliant thank you so much for having me it's been brilliant i've loved chatting to you again it's, it's wonderful thank you thank you <laughs> and now you just finish the the end the video or leave the video i don't know does it give you an option for that um i think i just press there okay oh <laughs> thank you well thank you uh for everyone that watched today and please Share this video with your friends or family or a coworker, anyone that you think they can benefit. And I say this in every video, but I really want to, you know, emphasize even more because this is what what I'm doing here. I feel is very important in order uh, for people to heal and that are trying to find direction. And nothing is working in their lives. And the people that I bring here are amazing people. You know that I I trust and that I um that I feel guided to work with. So yeah, reach out to Ray, Ray I, <laughs> reach out to Ray. And uh, so if you're experiencing anything in your life that you need to, uh, to gain some clarity with, uh, thank you so much for watching, share the video. Um, remember we do this together and my name is Diana Sean and I am here to wake you up.